welcome back. In this video, we're going to review a couple of uh, definitions, some terminology, and then we're going to use Gauss-Jordan elimination on an augmented matrix. Um, we're going to get it into reduced row echelon form and write our solution set using a parameter. Let's get started. So first of all, let's take a look at the system um, and a couple of definitions. So this says that a linear system is called consistent when it has at least one solution. It's called inconsistent if it has none. So remember, any linear system of equations uh, has one solution, infinitely many solutions, or no solutions. So if it's one or infinitely many, we call it consistent. If it has no solutions, we call it inconsistent. So let's look at this system, and it says, without solving, first determine whether it's consistent or inconsistent, without solving. So this particular system turns out to be homogeneous. A homogeneous system is a system in which all the constant terms are zero. So notice that uh, on the right side of the equations, we have all zeros. That's called a homogeneous system. And clearly, if we plug in x equals zero, y equals zero, and z equals zero into each of those equations, it, it will satisfy each of those equations. So that's a solution. And we can just tell by looking at it, we have at least one solution. So it has to be consistent. Um, so any homogeneous system has at least one solution, namely the trivial solution, the one that we just noted. So it's always going to be consistent because it has at least one solution. And that one is x equals 0, y equals 0, z equals 0. In this case, there's only three unknowns. But a trivial solution to a linear system is a solution where all the unknowns turn out to be zero. So a trivial solution to a linear system is a solution where all variables are equal to zero. Okay. So in this case, we only have three. So we know it's consistent. We know it's got one solution. Does it have any more? In order to answer that question, we have to try to solve it. And we're going to use Gauss-Jordan elimination. And I'm going to walk you through the steps. So we're going to find all solutions of this system. x minus y minus z equals 0, 2x minus z equals 0, and x plus 3y plus z equals zero. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write down the augmented matrix for this system. So the augmented matrix means all the coefficients in front of the variables and the last column, so the column, first three columns will be the coefficients in front of the variables. The last column will be those zeros on the right side of the equation. So here's my augmented matrix. 1, negative 1, negative 1, 0 is the first row. Second row is 2, 0, negative 1, 0. And the third row is 1, 3, 1, 0. So now we're going to use elementary row operations to get this into reduced row echelon form. And so we're going to use Gauss-Jordan elimination. So remember the elementary row operations. We can swap two rows. We can add or subtract a multiple of one row to another row. Or we can multiply a row or divide a row by a real number, non-zero real number. If it's division, we can't divide by zero. Okay, so those are the only three operations we can do. And, we, and I'm going to do them one at a time. When you get really good at this, you can do maybe two, sometimes three operations in one step. But I want you to write them down 
Um, and that's because if you were to do this on a test or a quiz, I would want to see your work. And if I see a mistake in your matrix, I want to know, well, what were the operations you did? Maybe it was a minor mistake. Maybe you dropped a minus sign. And so show me your operations. If the operations are correct, I don't care if you got the right numbers, right? Partial credit is key. <laughs> so I'm going to walk you through all the steps in great detail. And I want you to try to do it this way, um, at least at the beginning. If you're going to if you're going to combine uh, operations, make sure you still write down the operations that you're using. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, I notice I have a leading one in the first entry in the first row, and that's good because that's where you want it if you're going to get it into reduced row echelon form, but the entries in that column below that one need to be zeros. So I'm going to use that one to sort of knock out the, the two right below it. To knock out the two, um, I need to multiply the first row by negative two and then add it to the second row. So I'm going to write that down as negative two times row one plus row two becomes my new row two. And so I'm now I'm rewriting row one, my, my new row two, and then row three didn't change. So notice my new row two, after I added negative two times row one to row two. Notice what I got. At any time in this video, if you need to pause and, and and take notes or try to figure out how to get from one step to the other, you should pause. All right, so now I notice I still have um, a non-zero entry in that first column below the, the leading one in the, in the first row. I've got um, another one in the third row. I need to knock that one out. So I'm gonna use the, the first row. I'm gonna subtract one times the first row from the third row to knock out that one in, in the first entry in the third row. So I'm writing down my operations. So it's negative one times row one added to row three becomes my new row three. So I'm writing down the first row doesn't change, the second row doesn't change, but the third row now becomes zero, positive four, two, zero. Okay. So now my first column is good. I got a one in the first entry of the first column and then two and then zeros below it. That's fine. So now let's move to the second column. I want a one in the second entry, the second um, entry in the second row. I want that two to be a one, right? So then I can use it to knock out the entries above and below it. So to make that two a one, I gotta multiply it by one half, right? Well, I have to multiply the whole row by one half. So I might, I'm doing one half times row two becomes my new row two. So when I write down my new matrix, row one doesn't change, row three doesn't change, Row two is now one, a zero, one, one half, zero. There, there's my new row two. Okay, so now I can use that one to knock out the entries above and below it. So I'm going to use it to knock out the negative one above it. So I just have to add row two to row one, right? So I'm going to do row two plus row one becomes my new row one. So let's write it down. The third row doesn't change. The second row doesn't change. But the first row changes. It becomes one, zero, negative one half, zero. Okay. So now um, I'm going to use that one again to knock out the four that's below it. So I need to add negative four times row two 
to row 3. So let's write that down. Negative 4 times row 2 added to row 3 becomes my new row 3. So let's write down the new matrix. The first row doesn't change. The middle row doesn't change. First and second rows aren't changing. The only row that's going to be new is the third row. That becomes 0, 0, 0, 0. When I added negative 4 times row 2 to row 3, it just knocked out everything in row 3. Okay, so now we are actually in reduced row echelon form. So it's in row echelon form when you have sort of a step-like pattern. Um, you have non-zero entries on the first row, the first entry in the first row, and then as you go down, the next non-zero entries are to the right. You're going down, the next non-zero entry is to the right. But also it's called reduced row echelon form because whenever you have a leading one, and I have two of them in my matrix, um, all the other entries in that column are zeros. So look at the two leading ones that I have. Anything above and below the, the leading one is a zero. So that means it's in a reduced, reduced row echelon form. And we can't go any further. So now we can write down uh, the equations that go with, we only have two equations now. We don't have a third equation. Um, so the first equation, we can write that down. It says x minus 1 half z is equal to 0. That's what the first row says. And then the second row says y plus 1 half z is equal to 0. And we're going to use parameters to represent all the solutions. So let's solve these two equations um, for x and for y, both in terms of z. So the first one gives us x equals 1 half z. The second one gives us y equals negative 1 half z. So now let's choose uh, s to be our parameter. So let's say, um, because z is free, Notice both x and y depend on z, but z can be any real number. We call that a free variable. And so we're going to let it be uh, the parameter s. And now the solutions are going to look like this. The solution set is x equals 1 half s, y equals negative 1 half s, and z equals s where s is any real number. We have to specify what s is. We can't just say x equals 1 half s, y equals negative 1 half s, and z equals s. We've got to tell our reader what the heck s is. Where did it come from? We'll just say it's any real number. You get to pick. All right, so that's an example of a homogeneous system that has more than uh, the tr it has the trivial solution, as all homogeneous systems do, but it actually has infinitely many solutions, and we found what all of them have to look like. And we used, we used Gauss-Jordan elimination, and we got the augmented matrix into reduced row echelon form. All right, that's it for this one, and I will see you in the next one.